so uh, let us discuss uh, the new topic. And actually, this is an extension of uh, the topic that is devoted to regression models. Oh, uh, sorry. Before we begin with uh, with uh, the new topic, I want to uh, discuss a little bit. Uh, uh, discuss a little bit one thing uh, from the previous lecture. Uh, at the end of the previous lecture, we discussed uh, so-called interactions, uh, and I want to I want to consider and new example about uh, this stuff. So interactions in regression models. And uh, let us assume that, uh, for example, we are interested in um, effects of two variables, let us assume that uh, we have some educational data, uh, like you have several schools and uh, in each school you have, uh, you have uh, students uh, and uh, you have something like this. Uh, you know, the data set looks like uh, you have school type, and uh, you have program. And here is uh, some score of a student. And uh, school types, uh, for, for example, can be um, public or private. And program can be um, like traditional or innovative, whatever that means. Uh, for example, we have uh, a student from traditional uh, uh, from public school who uses traditional uh, traditional traditional program and uh, their score is seventy five and there is another student with innovative program and their score eighty and we have uh, some students from private school with traditional program and they score 35 and so on. Uh, and uh, we are interested uh, in how different variables, different values of these two variables uh, affect uh, this score. And uh, we can consider uh, two different regression models. Okay, probably more than two, but you know, we can consider uh, the basic uh, regression model is uh, something like this. We have score as um, some beta naught uh, plus beta one times variable that checks uh, that school type is uh, public and beta two times a uh, variable that checks that program is innovative. Uh, so these two things are the corresponding dummy variables. Uh, just uh, a quick reminder that uh, this is dummy variable uh, and uh, it equals to one uh, if condition is satisfied. And uh, these are just our regression coefficients. Uh, so uh, if we uh, if we consider uh, this regression model, uh, let us discuss uh, what can you say about uh, the interpretation of these uh, three coefficients. Uh, for example, what is uh, beta naught? How to interpret uh, beta naught in this case? Hmm? 
Or probably let me put it uh, in other way. Uh, uh, we can consider four groups uh, of uh, observations, in this case, four groups uh, of students of these schools, uh, depending on the values uh, of these uh, two variables. Uh, we have something like this. So we have school type, and we have program. And school type can be public or private. And program can be traditional or innovative. Uh, so depending on the values of these uh, two variables, our regression model um, predict uh, different values of the score. Um, which value should I put here? What should I put? What should I put here? Like but, zero uh, or one? Hmm? Like one or zero? Uh, no, uh, no. This is uh, I. I want to put here a prediction of my model. So uh, this prediction of the score. So basically, uh, this model just says uh, something like, um, okay, this beta naught and beta one and beta two are some some uh, numbers, and uh, this model predicts uh, that uh, the score can be uh, calculated um, uh, that the dependence of the score if on the this variable, the the school type and the program can be calculated using this formula. So. If you know the school type and if you know a program, then you can make a prediction of the score using this formula. So uh, what is the prediction of the score for this cell? So when hmm. program is traditional and school type is public. What 85? would you do? Hmm? 85? Uh, no, uh, uh, I, no I this is this I is just 75. this is just a part of the data. This is not the whole data. Uh, note that you have this um, uh, ellipsis here. Uh, so you have much more rows with different values here. And uh, what I'm asking now is not about the data. This is just an example of how data looks like for my model. But what I'm asking now is uh, this formula, this model. And this model doesn't have any numeric values in it because you have just uh, these variables. But you, we can use variables uh, you know, to fill this this table. So again, I'm asking about this cell. What uh, what our model predicts about this cell? Can I try? Hmm? It will be it will be beta none plus uh, beta. Uh, was beta one and this one. Uh, uh, okay, uh, da, da, da. this is school type public. Let us, okay, sorry. Let me use here different. I just change uh, my. Ah, then just uh, basically. Uh, beta, mm -hmm. beta none. Yeah, uh, here we have beta not uh, because uh, in this cell, uh, we have program uh, that is traditional. So this variable is zero. And we have, uh, we have, uh, so school type is, school type is, sorry. This is, school type is public, this part. And uh, it means uh, that this variable is zero. And program is traditional. And it means that this variable is also zero. So we have beta naught plus uh, beta one times zero plus uh, beta two times zero. And this is just beta naught. Uh, now, uh, uh, somebody else, please uh, tell me what, what uh, should I write here? Mm -hmm. Beta naught plus beta two. Mm -hmm. 
in beta naught plus beta two. Exactly, uh, because uh, because uh, in this case uh, I have innovative program, and it means that this thing is one. So we have this sum. Okay. Anybody else, please uh, tell me what should I put here. Peter one plus Peter one. Mm -hmm, exactly. And the last, uh, the last cell. What should I put in the last cell? Beta naught plus beta one plus beta two. Mm -hmm, exactly. Uh, so we should sum up together all three coefficients. Uh, note that this table, uh, this is just an inter interpretation of this model. And um, it, it makes it uh, clear that uh, this model assumes uh, that we have two effects, effect of uh, school type of private schools. Uh, this is uh, beta one. This is the difference uh, between private and public schools. So uh, for example, if it is positive, it means that people in private schools uh, have larger grades, high, uh, high grades, high scores uh, than people in public school. Yeah? So this is, the, this is this difference. And we have this beta two, uh, which measures the difference between two, two programs. And what is important is that this model uh, assumes linearity. It means that we believe that uh, these effects, if they turned on together, if we have both uh, private school and innovative program, then uh, they just sum up uh, that we just have some of two effects, effect of innovative schools and effect of, uh, of innovative program and effect of mm, a private school. This is a modal assumption that these effects just sum up, but of course, it is possible that in reality, we have something different. Uh, for example, it is possible that, for example, if this innovative program is demanding from, from the teacher, uh, and uh, if there are um, uh, probably better teachers in private schools than in public schools, and it, it, it is possible, for example, that the effect of this innovative program in a private school uh, would be much larger than in public school. So in this case, uh, we say that it is not true that we have just a sum of two effects. Uh, we have some meaningful interaction between, between two, two effects. And to catch this, this idea, we have to introduce a different model. Uh, we have to introduce new model. Uh, it is similar to the previous one. Uh, but uh, I also add a third, uh, a third term. Okay, actually a fourth term. Uh, and for this term, I use uh, a new variable. Uh, that equals to one if both, uh, if both variables are have this have these values, and now let us uh, fill 
a new table, uh, actually the same table as previously, but for this new model. So this thing, uh, this new thing is called, uh, is called interaction term. Um, let us now uh, fill this table. And uh, which difference uh, can you mention between the previous table and the new table? So again, we can ask what should we put here? This is the same thing as uh, previously, um, because uh, if uh, we have program traditional and school type public, uh, then all three dummy variables are zeros because none of these condition, conditions are satisfied. So here we have beta naught. Uh, as previously here, we have beta naught plus beta 2 and here we have beta naught plus beta 1 and what should I put in the last cell? I'm okay because mm -hmm. yeah I have to sum up all three uh, all four betas and now uh, let us discuss what how can we interpret this coefficient beta 3 uh, you see that uh, again we have uh, this beta one and beta two that can be considered an effect uh, of uh, private schools and of uh, innovative programs. So uh, again, as previously, beta beta one is the difference between these two cells, and beta two is difference between these two cells. Uh, but now uh, we expect that if we turn on both effects, uh, beta 1 and beta 2, uh, we have not only this sum of these three terms, so sum of two effects, but we also have uh, this additional term that uh, gives us some information about how the interaction of these two effects uh, work. So this is, uh, this is a value that is added uh, to uh, just to the sum of these uh, individual effects. And uh, this, is, this is what is called interactions uh, in these regression models. This is actually the same story as uh, we discussed at the end of the previous lecture when we discussed that it is possible that you have two drugs that work uh, only together. Uh, again, uh, in this case, uh, for example, if, if you have two drugs that work only together, then it means that the individual effect of each drug, so these values, uh, would be close to zero, uh, but uh, you would have large value of this coefficient. And um, in this case, uh, it, the same we, we use the same the same formulas, but it is possible uh, it is possible that um, you have uh, non, non non zero effects, uh, for example, non zero effects of switch from here to here or switch from here to here. But also you have something something additional here. Can I ask a question? Uh, yes, sure. So I understood last time uh, example with drugs. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. So the bit of three means that uh, interaction. So we, so it, we have to use this bit of three to check uh, that two, two drugs are work only together and one doesn't work. And in this case with schools, it means that uh, so uh, only program and school type can. Uh, is you know so we think that if school is private with innovative program uh, can give only good result good scores and uh, for example private schools with traditional or public schools traditional or with innovative give bad scores something like that oh uh, well uh, the, the, this model doesn't assume uh, anything about the science of this effect uh, this model just says uh, that uh, there is uh, some additional terms uh, that does not that cannot be explained just by some of of, of these effects. Uh, it is not necessarily have to be positive. For example, uh, it is possible. Uh, for example, it is possible that you have something like this. Uh, let us uh, discuss how to interpret something like uh, beta 1, 2, uh, beta 2, 3, and uh, beta 3, negative 1. Uh, how would you interpret uh, this combination of coefficients? So what does it mean that these two coefficients are positive, but uh, this coefficient is negative? That innovative programs and private schools work good uh, on their own, but together they give negative effect. Uh, does it mean that it is better to, uh, to uh, does it mean that it is better to be here rather than here? No, mm -hmm. because uh, this this sum of the betas is still uh, more than just beta zero. Mm -hmm. Yes. So uh, if we have this uh, beta three to be negative, uh, it means uh, that you have okay. It means that uh, probably you have some well some kind of saturation. Uh, I mean that uh, if you switch from traditional to innovative program, it gives you some boost in your score. And if you switch from public school to private school, it is also give you some boost. Uh, and these boosts are encoded by these uh, variables. Uh, but if you, if you do both of them, then uh, the sum, uh, then uh, you, will not you will not obtain the, the sum of the boosts but you will obtain something a little bit less than the sum of the boosts. Uh, and uh, this is uh, the deviation from uh, the sum of the boosts is encoded by this beta three. So it will be, uh, in any case, uh, it is better to be here uh, than here, and it is better to be here than here, and it is better to be uh, here than here, but uh, but what, what this coefficient says is that it is not as good as uh, the case when uh, you just sum up these effects. For example, uh, in criminal law, uh, there is a rule of, of partial summation of uh, uh, sentences. So if you are sentenced, uh, if you did two crimes and uh, one crime gives you three uh, years in prison, and another crime gives you two years in, of, of prison. It is possible that both crimes uh, give you not five but four years in prison. Uh, so this is uh, this is uh, another example of violation of this uh, linearity. Uh, so my idea here is just to explain that uh, when you have some data and you want to do some meaningful regression model, 
then uh, you have to make choices. You have to choose uh, the regression model. You have to choose between this, for example, be between this model and uh, this model. And there is a difference in the assumptions. Here you assume linearity. You assume that effects can only sum up and nothing more. And here you expect that uh, it is possible that you have some non-trivial interaction between these models, uh, between these effects. And uh, which model to choose uh, is uh, up to researcher and it depends on the on some domain knowledge, on some intuition. Uh, basically, it is possible well, uh, as, as, as one of the approaches, uh, it is possible, for example, to fit this model and then to check if uh, this coefficient is uh, non-zero, significantly non-zero. And if it is not uh, non-zero, so if it is effectively uh, zero, if it is not significant, uh, then to switch to simpler model. Uh, I, I cannot say that I do like uh, this approach. Uh, there are some reasons um, uh, why I don't like it, but I'm, I'm not going to discuss it in details now. But uh, what I want to say is that uh, if you have some data, it is possible to uh, consider different models uh, and which model to choose depends on the assumption that you have. Okay, uh, so uh, are there any other questions about this, this stuff about interaction? Okay. Uh, then we can probably continue, and uh, the next uh, the next story is logistic regression. And uh, uh, and previously we discussed that uh, we we discussed that uh, we can include uh, categorical data in term. Uh, into our model if it is uh, if it is uh, in independent variables. Uh, this is done with dummy encoding, just like we discussed uh, previously. But uh, what happens if uh, the variable that you want to predict that your dependent variable is categorical? Uh, Logistic regression treats a special case, a very uh, important and very uh, and very popular case, uh, when dependent variable is uh, categorical and binary. Um, categorical and specifically binary, so it means that only two. Uh, only two values. Uh, for example, it is uh, usual when you are interested in the realization of some of some linguistic uh, feature, uh, like uh, which suffix to use, uh, which word to choose, or so something like this. Uh, probably we have some some word that can be that can be uh, like um, archaic or innovative uh, or some other linguistic feature. And this is your uh, this is your uh, uh, this is your depending variable. Uh, assume that you, for example, you collected some data from informants, so you did some interviews, and in each interview you just fixed uh, which uh, uh, which um, realization of this linguistic feature we have for a particular informant. 
And let us assume that uh, my data looks like uh, the following. Here we have linguistic feature. Um, and uh, then we have some information about the informant. For example, age. And uh, for example, city, something like this. And uh, this linguistic feature can be innovative, uh, like H30, city Moscow. And here we have some. Okay, uh, let us, uh, to make things simpler, let us now, uh, for a moment, let us forget about this city variable, just linguistic feature uh, that can be innovative or archaic and age. So you have data like this. And you're interested in how the choice of this linguistic feature depends on the age. Uh, so you want to do something like a regression analysis. But on the left hand side of your regression equation, you have uh, this linguistic feature. Uh, how do you think uh, how to deal with, uh, with, this, with this problem? So I want something like a uh, linguistic feature as a function of age. How to deal with it? When your dependent variable is numeric variable, then everything is simple. Here is some number and uh, here is some arithmetic expression. And if you, if you calculate the value of this expression, you have, if you have, you have a number. Now, uh, what to do if your linguistic feature is not a number, but just a choice of two variants? Can we make it as a numeric variable also like innovative is zero mm -hmm. and archaic is one? Yeah, we can. Uh, and uh, this is actually a first idea is to encode, uh, encode dependent variable uh, as dummy variable. Uh, like uh, we add variable linguistic feature innovative. So we have now ones and zeros. And uh, now uh, we can treat uh, this problem as just uh, a simple bivariate regression model with these two variables. And uh, to illustrate it, uh, let me let me draw So I have something like So it is possible that our data set now looks like looks like this. So uh, on vertical axis, I have only two possible values, uh, zeros and ones. So uh, all the data, all the points uh, lie uh, on the two horizontal lines, zero and one. And theoretically, it is possible to use just ordinary least squares, uh, just a usual regression, uh, and find a straight line that goes like this. Uh, this is OLS. Uh, 
and it is not problem to fit to fit linear regression to this data. Uh, but uh, how would you interpret this this line? How would you interpret the function that you get uh, when you apply this linear regression to this data? How would you interpret, uh, for example, if I consider uh, some new point, how would you interpret uh, the value uh, that you get as, as, as your prediction, this value? How do you think? Any ideas of the possible interpretation? Maybe some probability to belong to yeah uh, yeah it is it is very tempting to say something about, to, to, to interpret uh, this value as uh, as in in some probabilistic terms to say that it is um, related to probability for a particular point to belong to this class of ones so probability for this linguistic feature uh, to be innovative. Uh, yeah, and it, 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 it is really a very reasonable idea, but uh, it has some problem with this idea. Do you, see, uh, do you see this problem on this picture? Maybe the problem is that this uh, prediction, uh, it varies not only between one and zero, but also has like values more than one and less than zero. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have here, we have some problem uh, with the interpretation because uh, we, have, we have some values uh, of variable age for which we have some prediction. Our, our model actually gives us prediction for any point. And uh, it is clear that there are no uh, meaningful interpretation of uh, this prediction because it cannot be interpreted by uh, as probability. I cannot say that this is, uh, this is absolutely a uh, deal breaker. In fact, you can do things like this and you can just say that, okay, outside of uh, the region where we have uh, where we have values between zero and one, just our model does not make sense. It is possible to say something like that because of course we understand, uh, for example, that our model clearly does not have any sense uh, here in negative uh, when H becomes negative. Uh, our model gives us some prediction and any model will give us uh, some prediction like linear model or something more complex. But of course we understand that it just does not make sense. And uh, okay, it is, it is possible to, to do something like this, but uh, there is a more, uh, more, convenient, a more convenient and more natural way to uh, discuss probabilities in this context. And to do so, we have to switch from ordinary squares, from linear regressions, uh, to another kind of regression, uh, which is actually called logistic regression. And uh, to do so, uh, I have to introduce a new thing. So let us discuss some probabilistic model. Uh, we are interested in uh, in some function p of x. Uh, okay, p in, in this case x is h, 
and uh, this is a probability that uh, linguistic feature is innovative. Uh, for given age. So we say that for different ages, we have different probabilities uh, to use this linguistic, to, to use innovative linguistic feature. And uh, now we have, this thing is just some function. And for each age, uh, we have that this probability is something like something between zero and one. Uh, I will avoid uh, getting values uh, exactly equal to zero or exactly equal to one, just I want to keep, uh, to, to keep something for, for chance. Even, even if probability is very large, it is still possible that it is not exactly uh, equal to one, but it is still possible that, uh, that it is slightly smaller. And uh, now uh, let me transform this, uh, this variable, this, this probability uh, in such a way that uh, the values uh, would be not from zero to one, but the values would be any real number. And uh, the first step is to switch from probabilities to so-called odds. Uh, so what is odds? Uh, this, what are odds? I have to divide P, divide by one minus P. And uh, this thing is called odds. Uh, you probably heard uh, this word. Uh, in Russian, it is shanse. And uh, you probably heard these words uh, in the following uh, example. Um, uh, like odds uh, of winning uh, are one to one. Шансы выиграть один к одному. Uh, what does it mean uh, if you say this thing? What is the probability to win? Yeah, it means that probability of winning is uh, is one half. And uh, if you put this one half here, you see that uh, you have one half here and one minus one half here. So you have uh, one half to one half. And this is the same thing as one to one. Uh, so this is just another way to measure probability, not to measure probability, but measure odds. And now if probability uh, changes in this interval from zero to one, uh, what can you say about, about odds? What is the smallest value of odds and what is the largest value of odds? zero and infinity, I don't know. If, mm -hmm. if P equals to one, then we have one divided by zero. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, this is uh, this is actually why I uh, why I forbid uh, P to take value one exactly. Uh, but indeed, uh, if, we, uh, if we are thinking about this value, uh, depending on this uh, probability, and we, we see that if uh, probability is very close to zero, then uh, we have here, we have something that is close to zero and here we have something that is close to one. So, uh, so this is approximately uh, zero over one. So this is something that is close to zero. But on the other hand, 
if you have probability to be close to one, uh, then here in numerator, uh, you have something close to one, but in the denominator, you have something very, 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 very small. And this thing can be arbitrarily large. So uh, it changes from zero to plus infinity. And uh, this is the first step of my transformations. And the second step is to transform this value to something uh, that takes uh, values from negative infinity to plus infinity. And uh, to do so, uh, I would use uh, logarithms. Let me recall that uh, there are function there are functions uh, like exponential function. Uh, so this is recall exponentials and logarithms. And uh, this is the graph of exponential function. e to the power x or x, x, uh, this, uh, this are the same. And uh, if you forget uh, how this exponential graph looks, uh, you can probably uh, recall some, uh, some news stories about uh, COVID uh, when uh, these graphs became uh, very popular for some moment because the initial initial parts of epidemic uh, looks like this if you if you measure for example number of uh, infected people it grows exponentially at the beginning of the epidemic and uh, another way to another way to reconstruct this curve uh, is to use not function e to the power x uh, that can be a, a a bit cryptic, but to use a function like two to the power x, uh, which will which would be very similar uh, to this one. Uh, for example, uh, let us find uh, what this value is. So this is the value of exponential of zero, and uh, what should I put here? One. One, exactly. Uh, this is one, just, just like two to the power x, uh, you have two to the power zero, uh, it equals to one. And uh, if, I, uh, if I move uh, in this direction, uh, you have a, a rather large uh, growth. It, it, it growth, uh, uh, this growth is like uh, two, uh, two to the power two, two to the power three, and so on. And if you go here, uh, you have decline, and and this looks like like this. So you have you have a horizontal asymptote here. And uh, this is exponential function, and logarithm is an inverse function. Uh, and uh, the graph of uh, inverse function uh, can be obtained from this graph of exponential function by mirroring with respect to this uh, uh, line y equals to x. And the logarithm looks rather symmetric. So this is y equals to logarithm x. Um, so uh, exponential function uh, takes values from zero to plus infinity. And it means that inverse function uh, 
uh, is defined only on uh, on only on this rate, only on this half line. And on the other hand, the values of logarithm uh, are from negative infinity to plus infinity. And uh, then we will get, we will use this logarithm function and uh, we consider this value, which is, called, which is called log odds. And let me ask you what are the possible values uh, that takes logarithm of odds uh, if odds changes from zero to plus infinity. So what is the range of this thing? Minus infinity and plus infinity. Mm -hmm, exactly. In fact, if you look at this graph, uh, you see that uh, if uh, an argument of logarithm uh, is close to zero, then the value of logarithm is uh, very, very, very small. It is negative and very small. So it is very negative. And so uh, the left, uh, the left border of the segment is somewhere near negative infinity. And uh, on the other hand, if you increase uh, this thing, you also increase uh, the value of logarithm and it can be made uh, arbitrarily large by selecting uh, large enough, by selecting argument large enough. And it means that uh, this logarithm uh, takes values an arbitrary real number can be uh, taken as a value of this logarithm odds. So basically, uh, this uh, this function uh, transforms uh, the space of probabilities, uh, which naturally lies uh, from zero to one. Uh, it transforms it to the whole real line from negative infinity to plus infinity. Uh, why it is important for us uh, is that. Uh, you can now you can now consider the following regression. Uh, so we cannot say that probability depends on age linearly because linear function. Uh, can take uh, any values from negative infinity plus, uh, to plus infinity. But uh, logarithm of odds that is in one-to-one -one correspondence with probabilities. Uh, this value can take any, any, any real, real value. And it means that it does make sense to, to write this formula. So now we expect that not probability depends on H linearly, but log odds depends on the h linearly. And uh, we can transform this formula and uh, we can say that if I, if I do some al algebraic transformations, I would get uh, something like this, that e uh, as a function of h, is equal to one over one plus e to the power negative so i just put this right hand side uh, to uh, this function and uh, let me introduce a new function that is called sigmoid so basically it is sigmoid of some value z is a one over one plus plus e to the power negative z. Uh, 
uh, by the way, uh, let me uh, let me uh, return to to these log odds, and let me ask uh, what is uh, which probability corresponds to log odds that is equal to zero. So if log odds uh, is zero, then what can you say about probability? So if log odds uh, equals to zero, uh, what can you say about odds? If logarithm of some function equals to zero, then what can you say about the argument of uh, this this logarithm? What can you say about this thing? It's mm -hmm. one. It is one. Yeah, uh, we said that we have one here. Uh, it means that for a logarithm we have one here. So logarithm of one equals to zero. And it means that if we want to get zero as the value of logarithm, then the argument uh, is one. And uh, if, if, log, uh, if odds are equal to one, uh, what is the probability? 50%. Mm -hmm. One half. So in a sense, it is very natural. Uh, so you, you, have, you have a real line and in this real line, you have positive numbers and negative numbers. And uh, these positive numbers corresponds to the case when probability is larger than one half. So if it is log odds, then here probability is larger than one half and here probability is smaller than one half. So it is, it is indeed very natural. Uh, and now uh, let me return to the inverse function to sigmoid. Uh, here I just, uh, I just uh, solve this thing as an equation uh, with respect to this P of H. Uh, and I don't want to, to do the calculations. You can do it by yourself. But uh, finally, we have this function and let us discuss this function a little bit. Uh, first of all, this function is defined for all real, uh, real values of Z. And uh, what can you say about Uh, the values of this sigmoid. For example, uh, what is the value uh, of sigmoid at point zero? Which is the value of sigma of zero? One half. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so we have value one half here. Uh, what happens with uh, this sigmoid uh, when uh, Z increases? If Z increases, uh, what happens with uh, sigma of Z? Does it increase or, or decrease?
it increases as I understand. Uh, yes, uh, sigma of that is uh, also increasing because uh, this uh, actually, if you consider this exponential function, uh, you see that you have negative uh, sign here. So if Z increases, then uh, minus Z decreases. And then this exponential thing uh, also decreases. So you have smaller denominator and it means that the fraction itself increases. And what happens if uh, Z tends to plus infinity? Uh, what happens if Z becomes very, very, very large? Uh, again, you have to first understand what happens with this exponential function. And uh, we have a graph of this exponential function. So what happens if uh, Z becomes very large? What happens with exponential? It means that you are here, somewhere here because of minus sign. And it means that uh, this exponential thing becomes very close to zero. And what happens to sigmoid? What is the limit of uh, sigmoid as uh, Z tends to plus infinity? It's very close to one. Mm -hmm, exactly. Uh, this thing gets uh, very close to one. And now let us consider a, an, an opposite limit. If uh, Z becomes, if Z becomes negative, so if we go here, uh, then uh, this exponential becomes very, very, very large, right? And what happens with this fraction? Where does it tend? If uh, this thing becomes very, very, very large, then you just one over like something like this. And it is very close to zero. So, uh, this function uh, looks like looks like this. Uh, its domain is a set of all real numbers, and its range is uh, from zero to one. And this is actually very natural because it is exactly what uh, we want. Uh, we want uh, this uh, sigma to model some probability. So we have to obtain values from zeros to ones. We have to obtain values somewhere here. Uh, in fact, I can show you this, uh, this function. I can let us construct this function uh, exactly. Uh, I will use like something like Jobinger. So one over one plus e to the power minus x. Yeah, here we are. Uh, this is uh, this is our sigmoid, and you see that uh, it behaves exactly as we discussed. Uh, it is uh, it, it takes values from zeros to ones, and it increases, and it have it have these horizontal asymptotes. Uh, and uh, the idea is that if you put not x in this function, but uh, some linear uh, thing uh, that depends on x. Uh, for example, let us put two times x uh, minus three. 
Okay, uh, let me let me roll both graphs on the same uh, on the same screen. E to the power minus. Okay, I can use. Oops. Minus beta not uh, plus. bit one times x and now let us uh, look what happens if i change uh, these values of uh, beta naught and beta one and we begin with uh, beta naught equal to zero and beta one equals to one uh, and in this case uh, this is just a regular sigmoid and now let us uh, look what happens if I uh, would change beta one. So beta one is a coefficient for x. Um, how do you think? Uh, what happens if I put here not e to the power minus x, but e to the power minus two x's or three x's? What happens with the graph? It becomes like more narrow, more close to zero. All the points are like closer to zero. Yeah, those points that are close to zero are even closer. And that points that are close to one are even closer. So uh, you see that if I increase this bit of one, uh, this curve uh, becomes more, um, how to say it, steeper. Yeah? And uh, what happens if I would change beta naught? Let us try. Uh, you see that beta naught, uh, the, the changes of beta naught shifts uh, my picture to the left or to the right. If I make beta naught smaller, then it means that everything uh, shifts to the right and uh, the other way around. So we have two variables and you see that if B to one is negative, then you have different, uh, you have op opposite, uh, opposite effect that it becomes decreasing. So we have two variables. Uh, one variable uh, affects steepness of this sigmoid and uh, another variable affects uh, shift horizontal shifts of this of this curve and now uh, let me return to uh, to our discussion uh, actually we can uh, return to the beginning uh, when we have some data And here we have age, and here we have probability of innovative feature. And now uh, we have a family. Uh, of curves uh, that looks like uh, a shifted and modified version of this sigmoid. So previously when we discussed uh, linear regressions, uh, we had a family of straight lines. Uh, straight lines can be uh, of different slope and uh, they, can be, uh, uh, they, they, they can be shifted to the right and to the left. 
And uh, the same thing uh, for sigmoids. Sigmoids are not straight line, but anyway, this is a two parametric family, uh, in this case, two parametric families, uh, a family of uh, these curves. And now we want to fit a sigmoid uh, in such a way that it goes near the points that uh, we have in the data. So for example, for this data, I choose uh, this sigmoid, decreasing sigmoid, uh, because I see that I have more uh, points uh, here for larger values of H. And I have uh, more points with value zero. And uh, for smaller value uh, of H, I have uh, more points with, uh, with value one. So uh, I can expect that probability uh, to get innovative linguistic feature decreases uh, with age. Uh, what can you say? Uh, what can you say about? Um, so I believe that this is a sigmoid of beta naught plus uh, beta one times age. Uh, what can you say about the sign of uh, beta one? for this picture. Is it positive or negative? Negative. Mm -hmm. It is negative, yeah. Uh, it is negative uh, because uh, if it is positive, then this thing is increasing and sigmoid is also increasing. And we see here that this thing is decreasing and it means that uh, this, this thing should be decreasing and to make it decreasing, I have to put something negative here. Uh, again, uh, these values of uh, beta naught and beta one are obtained from the data. Uh, estimates of beta naught and beta one uh, are obtained uh, from the data. Uh, such that, mm, okay, uh, with uh, some kind of uh, best fit, uh, searching algorithm. Uh, so uh, I want uh, I want this uh, line uh, to be a best fit of uh, our data points. Uh, and uh, actually, uh, uh, there is a special name for this uh, best fit searching algorithm that is used here. Uh, it is called a uh, maximum likelihood estimate. And it is used, uh, it is used uh, in various contexts in statistics. Uh, but uh, I don't have time now to explain it in details. Uh, but probably it is not needed. Uh, you, you have to understand that we try to uh, draw this line in, in such a way that uh, these points like close, uh, as close to this line as possible in something. And that it is a very similar to least squares method, but it is not actually a least squares, um, but something, so, something very close. You minimize different function, but something very close to least squares method that are used in linear regression. And that's it. Uh, this is the logistic regression that we will use in our uh, research. I think uh, I think this is the very popular uh, instrument because it is rather user, usual case in uh, linguistics when your uh, dependent variable uh, that you want to, which which behavior you want to explain, 
uh, that uh, it, it is categorical. It is something in the first approximation, something something that is binary. Uh, again, as usual, we don't have to do any kind of manual calculations because everything uh, will be done by R, but we have to understand what R gives us. And uh, unfortunately, if you compare the result of this uh, logistic regression with linear regression, the exact value of this coefficient uh, it is not so easy to interpret this value. It is easier to interpret this sign. Uh, if sign is negative, it means that increase of h decreases uh, the probability. And if it is positive, it means that increase of h increases the probability. But uh, it is much uh, more difficult to say something like, if I uh, increase H by one, then probability will be increased by, it is not clear by what. We can write some formulas for that, but uh, it doesn't give any good intuition. But what we have to understand is that the larger uh, value beta one here, uh, then the, the, the steeper this, uh, this curve be, uh, becomes. So the, the, the stronger the effect that we uh, want to investigate. And uh, if, uh, if this beta is small, it means, that, uh, it means that our effect is not very strong. It is not very visible. For example, it is possible that you have something like this then uh, you, you probably don't have a very strong effect because most of the for for most of the points uh, it is not clear where you are here or here so your best fit curve uh, would be something like this without uh, without this sharp step um, and this uh, this uh, corresponds to small effects, small small values of uh, of the coefficient. Okay, are there any questions? About logistic regression. Of course, uh, we discussed only logistic regression with uh, one independent variable, but just as uh, we uh, switched from uh, bivariate uh, linear regression to multivariate linear regression, you can consider multivariate logistic regression. In this case, you just put here not a linear function of one variable, but linear function of several variables. But the logic is the same. Okay, questions? Okay, if there are no questions, so we will make a 10 minutes break and then continue with exercises with our
Okay, we continue. And I have... Okay, uh, I will use Tidyverse to begin with. And let us consider the following data set. Uh, so, I hope it is still there. Uh, so it is a rather small data set. Uh, we have only, um, basically we have uh, only two variables uh, and uh, these variables are related to properties of uh, various languages. And uh, we have some languages uh, with uh, adjectives. I don't know what adjective is, uh, but probably you know, uh, because uh, it is something phonetical as far as I understand. And uh, anyway, it is some feature uh, that can present in the language or uh, not present. Uh, and we have a number of uh, consonants uh, in this, uh, this is, uh, this is uh, according to phonological database, uh, LAPSID. Uh, this this is why uh, the, the name is nconsolapsid, and uh, we can uh, we can draw uh, this data set. Uh, for example, okay, uh, I have digiplot, and let us. Uh, we consider number of consonants uh, as our independent variable and uh, adjectives uh, as dependent variable. Mm, uh, sorry, I have to put aesthetics here and I have to put plus here. No, it doesn't work like this. Um, because I don't have to put quotes here. Yeah. Uh, so this is uh, the data that we have. And uh, you see that this is exactly uh, well, like we discussed at the lecture. Uh, we have binary variable, binary categorical variable as uh, our dependent variable and uh, numeric variable as uh, independent variable. And uh, so we can, uh, we may be interested in the question of the dependence uh, between uh, this, this variable and this variable. So we, we may be interested in uh, the estimation of probability for a language 
uh, to have adjectives uh, depending on number of consonants. We, we assume that uh, there is some dependence. For example, that languages with large number of consonants, uh, that it is more probable for them to have adjectives. And we want to test it uh, to give some to give some numerical uh, numerical estimate for this dependence. And let us use log logistic regression. Uh, this is done with a GLM uh, command. Uh, GLM uh, is, uh, is an abbreviation for generalized linear model. Um, generalized linear model. Uh, in fact, uh, logistic regression is a special case of so-called generalized, uh, generalized linear models. Uh, what does it mean that it is linear? Uh, it is not linear just like ordinary least squares regression, like what we discussed previously, uh, but uh, it is generalized linear uh, because in the right-hand side, you have something linear, but on the left-hand side, uh, you have not uh, not the values that you actually have, but you have some something else. Uh, in this case, you have log odds, logarithm of odds. And anyway, uh, this logarithm of odds depend uh, on other variables linearly. And uh, this is why it is generalized linear. Uh, so uh, I uh, use the specification of this model. Uh, my dependent variable is on the left and independent variable is on the right. And also I have to specify uh, to specify some uh, additional uh, parameters to make sure that uh, I use uh, that I use uh, logistic regression. In fact, this family binomial uh, allows me to do it. Uh, uh, basically, uh, we treat uh, this variable, um, in this case, it is just zeros and ones. This is like a result of coin tossing. Uh, but uh, the probability for this coin uh, to uh, give us a number one uh, depends on, uh, on this number of consonants. Uh, so, uh, because it is a coin tossing, uh, the corresponding family is called binomial. And uh, let us look at the result and it doesn't work because I didn't specify the data. Now let us try again and uh, it doesn't work either because uh, it doesn't understand uh, what to do uh, with with adjectives. Mm, probably we have to recode it as zeros and ones. Um, I thought that uh, it, it can do it automatically, but probably it is not. Okay, let us recode it. We need code for recording it. Hmm? Okay. Uh, so I will just uh, return to the cell where I uh, load the data and I will add manually a new variable uh, like uh, injectives. Yes. Let us check that it works. Yeah, looks to be working. 
So uh, I used this if else construction to recode my variable. And now let us put this thing as the dependent variable. And now let us look at uh, this fit. Okay, uh, how can you interpret this result? Now, for example, how can you interpret uh, this line? What can you say about, about this coefficient? It's positive. Mm -hmm. uh, what does it mean in terms of probability? That with the increasing of number of consonants, the probability of having adjectives also increases. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. Uh, in fact, it is in agreement with, uh, with this picture, uh, because we see that we have uh, several points here if we see that we have four large number of consonants, uh, most of the languages, actually all the languages in our uh, sample uh, for number of consonants larger than 30, they do have adjectives. And uh, it is not surprising that they have a positive, positive dependence here. Um, so this is the interpretation of this coefficient. Uh, in fact, uh, it is also possible to fit our model without coefficient at all. Uh, let us look uh, what happens if uh, we do that and let us try to interpret uh, the result. So I will put just number one here on the right hand side. And uh, let us look at the result. Uh, so in this model, uh, you don't have any variables at all on the right hand side, uh, but uh, uh, in any case, uh, we have coefficient uh, for intercept. So this is our beta naught. Yeah. Mm, and uh, so now our model, it looks like the following. Uh, logarithm of p over one minus p is equal to b to naught. Let us now uh, try to uh, use this estimate uh, to reconstruct value of p. Uh, so uh, what, uh, what can you say about this number? Uh, what does it correspond in this formula? Which value does it correspond? To, uh, which value this this number estimate of an intercept? Uh, what is the corresponding number here? Beta. Mm, this yes, this beta not actually not much variables here. Uh, so uh, we can reconstruct p uh, from this uh, from this beta not. Uh, can you try it uh, 
uh, can you try to do it? Uh, just find uh, the value of P. In fact, you have an equation like something like this, right? Yeah, uh, can you find P from this equation? Of course, we can use R to help us as a calculator. Uh, can you do it and uh, send me your answer? In fact, you can use uh, the results uh, from the lecture. Also, So how to reconstruct P from this equation? Actually, we discussed it in the lectures. So I just want you to apply the formula that we, uh, that we discussed there. Any ideas? It's E in the, like, in power of minus 0 0.5306 divided mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. 1 plus E in the same mm -hmm. power. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, in fact, if we just um, transform this, uh, this equation, uh, we see that we have logarithm of some value that is equal to something, and logarithm is an uh, is an inverse function for exponential. So I can just say uh, something like this. Mm -hmm. I can. Uh, put exponent to the left-hand side and to the right-hand side. And then exponential of logarithm is just the same thing as an argument of uh, this logarithm because logarithm and exponent are mutually inverse. So I have this thing. And uh, now it is uh, it is just a high school uh, exercise to to find p, and in fact p equals to sigmoid of this thing. Let us implement sigmoid. And let us find the value. 
Oops. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically it is uh, the same thing as to express P out of here uh, because, okay, I can, after this equation, I can say that P equals to exponent something like this. And it means that P Something like this. Uh, this function is actually the same thing as uh, sigmoid because you can multiply both uh, numerator and uh, denominator by this exponential. And then this thing becomes one, this thing becomes one, and this thing becomes exponential of uh, this, uh, this thing, but uh, with plus. And we see that this probability equals to all dot 37. Uh, how do you think, uh, how can we obtain the same probability uh, from the data? Uh, let me return to the data. And how do you think uh, how to obtain this probability? So this is probability to get adjective, to get a language with adjectives. Uh, and we don't use any information about number of consonants. So this is just a probability to obtain a language with adjectives. How to, how to find this probability? Calculate the sum, like the number of languages that have adjectives and to divide it by the mm -hmm. overall number of languages in the sense. Mm -hmm. And how to count how many languages have adjectives? You, you can sum the uh, the column and the adjectives, yes. Mm -hmm, yeah. Now we can do it like this, and we can divide it by uh, just number of number of rows of data set. And you see that the result uh, is exactly the same. Okay, probably we have some difference somewhere here, but this is due to uh, this is due to some simplifications here. And uh, in fact, you see that if we just don't have any uh, any predictors at all, uh, then uh, the intercept uh, just gives you log odds. Uh, of the probability that is fine is in, that can be found by by this just by counting and now let me return to uh, to this model uh, let us uh, let us interpret uh, this thing uh, what can I say about this estimate? the estimate of intercept uh, in this model, uh, model with this parameter number of consonants. How, to, how can we interpret it? Note that for this model, uh, we assume the following thing. We assume that uh, again, on the left-hand side, we have logarithm odds. And on the right-hand side, we have beta naught plus beta one times this variable.
or how to interpret uh, this value. So for the model without uh, without uh, for the model without predictors, uh, we have interpretation of this intercept. But uh, what about the model with uh, predictors? How to interpret an intercept in case of logistic regression? We have this model. And we have this number. What is the interpretation of this number? Any ideas? What is the correspondence between these uh, values and values in this formula? Mm, uh, this beta not uh, thing, uh, yes, uh, it corresponds to the horizontal shifts. Uh, but uh, I'm interested in terms of probabilities. Uh, so uh, we have some log odds of some probability, uh, log odds that is related to some probability, but uh, I'm interested in um, so how to interpret this bit or not. Uh, in which case, uh, one half probability at 9.9. .9. Uh, why do you think so? Probability of one half corresponds to the case when this log odds is zero. So if you want to find uh, if you want to find the value of uh, number of consonants uh, for which uh, this log odds equals to one half, then you have to solve this equation. You have to put here zero, and you have to solve this equation with respect to this number of consonants. Uh, why do you believe that it is 9.9? .9? Okay, probably uh, it can be easier to say something uh, by uh, drawing graphs. Uh, let us visualize uh, let us visualize this model. And uh, this can be done with ggplot. ggplot uh, have smoothing geometry and uh, this thing can use various uh, regression models uh, including logistic regression and we can do it mm -hmm. so this is the initial graph and let me put this aesthetics into ggplot. Yeah. And let me add Geom Smooth. 
Mm. And I have to put uh, their arguments for this method. Uh, this is uh, this is the same thing uh, as we put in our generalized linear model. So this is the same thing, family binomial. Uh, okay, let me remove uh, standard error uh, for for some moment just to simplify this formula. Uh, so you have you have this graph, and in fact this is the sigmoid uh, that we were discussing, and you see that here uh, the sigmoid is fitted to these lines, uh, and here in between of these two parts where you have uh, points with adjectives and points without adjectives, uh, you have some values of probability to be in between uh, close to all that five and uh, to the left uh, here we have some values of this line that are close to this uh, to this uh, line zero and uh, let us look at this uh, at this graph and let me uh, ask the same question how to interpret this intercept If we think about this curve, uh, what this intercept corresponds to? If we have this model, or I can put it uh, in this way, um, in which case, the prediction of the model uh, is equal to beta naught. What should happen? When number of consonants is zero? Yes, when number of consonants is zero. So if we can imagine a language without consonants at all, of course, uh, this is more or less complete nonsense, uh, but our model, theoretically, it can be applied uh, uh, to this situation as well. Uh, so basically, it means that we have to consider a point somewhere here. Uh, this is not even displayed uh, on this graph. And uh, we have to, um, and if we are interested in uh, log odds of uh, having adjectives uh, for the language uh, with zero consonants, then this log odds uh, equal to uh, equal to this value, and uh, we can find the corresponding we can find the corresponding probability. And uh, you see that this is very small, that this is uh, about 5e to uh, 5e minus 5. Uh, it means that it is something like 5. Um, so Yeah, this is the number like this. It is very small. Um, and uh, it is in agreement with this curve. You see that the values of uh, this curve here is very small. Uh, so you, you see that uh, the values of uh, these coefficients, uh, for, for example, the value of this intercept, uh, you they are something like this, negative nine or nine. It means that the corresponding probabilities are very close to zero or one. So this sigmoid tends to zero and one rather quickly. So it, if, 
if its argument uh, is close to zero, then sigmoid is close to one half. But if it is uh, large, as large as this thing or as small as this thing, then you probably have probability that it's close to zero. And uh, this is uh, what we have. Okay, by the way, let us find this point. What is the number of consonants that corresponds to probability one half? Uh, in fact, we can uh, use uh, this output and this formula to, to find it. Can you do it? Okay, can you find it numerically? This can be done by uh, using these estimates and solving the corresponding equation here. Anybody? Can you calculate it? So uh, I'm interested in this point, right? Where our probability is one half, but I want an exact value. And this can be done from, uh, from this equation. I just want everybody to uh, I want to make sure that everybody feel free with uh, these kind of equations and with these notions like logarithm of odds and some other things. So if you have the value, just, just send it me in direct message. And if you have any question, uh, just let me know.
So there are two options. Uh, either you can solve this problem, then you have to solve it and uh, send me uh, an answer, or you can't solve this problem. And it means that uh, there is something that you don't understand. And this means that you probably have some questions. So ask these questions. Is it clear what I'm asking for? We need to calculate what we get when we have, we have uh, probability exactly one half, right? Yes, uh, yes. Uh, I'm interested in the value of uh, this independent variable number of consonants that corresponds to the probability of one half. When it is equally likely to to get adjective or not to get adjective. Anybody? Sorry, maybe like I'm just too confused with this mm -hmm. logarithmic stuff. Maybe I personally I need some step by step solution, maybe one more time because I'm too puzzled. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, then my first question is uh, okay, but uh, uh, this case when it is uh, equally likely to have adjectives or not to have them. Uh, what is uh, the corresponding value of log odds? Okay, probably uh, first. Um, what is the value of P in this case? One half. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, then uh, let us uh, go to our formula and uh, let us recall what is uh, the value of log odds uh, that corresponds to a probability uh, that is equal to one half. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, may, uh, may I ask, uh, may I ask uh, uh, Kirill who, who asked this, uh, this question? One more time. If, if... I'm interested in the value of this thing of the left hand side uh, of this equation uh, for probability that is equal to one half. So I'm considering now this case, right? And this corresponds to probability. Uh, I measure probability to get adjectives, right? Uh, this case corresponds to probability that uh, is one half. 
And now I want to convert this probability to log odds. So I want to put uh, it here. What is the value here? So what is the argument of logarithm? What uh, what we have here? One. One, okay. What is the value of logarithm of one? Zero. Hmm? Zero, right? Zero, exactly. In fact, we can double check it with R. And you see that logarithm of one is zero. So on the left left hand side, we have zero. Uh, this uh, this corresponds to a case when uh, probability equals to one half. So log odds equals to zero. And now we have these values of um, our estimates. And I want to uh, I want to get uh, the this value from the from the equation that we obtained. How to do it? What is the value of number of consonants? So let me write the equation. Uh, we have zero equals to beta naught plus beta one times uh, this thing. Yep. Now um, I'm interested in this value. How to find it? What is the answer? Just send me your answer to direct message. Excuse me, one more stupid question. Uh, beta uh, not is intercept, right? Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So we basically have just a linear equation and we can solve it and find the value that we are interested in. So far I have one answer in my direct messages and I want more because I believe that everybody who understands this stuff uh, can solve it. And if you can't, then it means that you don't understand something. And now it is the best moment in your life to ask questions about this stuff.
So I have the second answer, but I want more. Let me reiterate, uh, we are trying to solve this problem uh, using this model. And we uh, we discussed that, and we discussed that uh, the case when uh, we have equal probability to have adjectives and not to have adjectives corresponds to log odds that is equal to zero because we have one here and logarithm of one is zero. And now we have this equation, and uh, I want to solve this equation with respect to uh, this number of consonants. And uh, I want to get uh, the estimates of betas uh, from the output of uh, R. And then to do just some simple arithmetic. So I want more answers and I won't go further until I get more answers. Okay, anybody else? Or ask your questions. There are no such thing as stupid questions. Just ask it right now. It is the best I'm... moment, yes? Uh, sorry, I missed where we take beta one. Yeah, that's 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 the question that uh, I was expected. Uh, you see that these betas are coefficients of your regression, and this thing is your variable that you have in your data. And uh, estimates of the coefficients uh, are given in this table, uh, in this table, in this column. And uh, so we have two uh, we have estimates of two coefficients uh, one is intercept and intercept it is always beta naught this is the this is the free term the coefficient without variable and what about the second coefficient where do we get it There are not so much options because under it, um, yeah, uh, we have we have this uh, column estimate and uh, actually this thing is the name of variable. So this is the coefficient that corresponds to this variable. So in in our case, this uh, this is this beta one. Mm So does it help?
So I'm still waiting for answers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so basically, if we put uh, these values into this equation, uh, we see that our intercept is this number, and it is uh, beta naught. And we have the following equation now. This is beta naught, and this is beta one. And we have to multiply it by this thing. And then we just solve a linear equation. Uh, and uh, of course, we can do it using high school methods. So we can move uh, this thing to the right and And now we can divide everything by this value. And we can find the actual value. Mm -hmm. mm, no, the opposite. And we have something around 26. And if we look at the graph, uh, we see that, yeah, that, that, that looks reasonable because we have 25 here and uh, this turning point uh, is, is somewhere here. It is indeed uh, close to 26 and something. Uh, so it is in agreement with uh, the graph. Well, um, Basically, the, the, the meaning of this exercise is that if you can't solve this exercise, then you probably don't understand how this graph works. And if you don't understand how this graph works, then probably you don't understand logistic regression at all. And I want everybody to understand it. So are there any questions about this, this exercise? Okay, uh, we can go further probably. And and let me consider, uh, in fact, uh, if I have, uh, if I have some particular point here, uh, I may be interested in the value of uh, this function. And of course, I can reconstruct this function uh, using this uh, uh, using this sigmoid function uh, using this uh, beta beta naught and beta one. But I can also use uh, function predict uh, to do it. Let us try both uh, both ways. For example, I'm interested in the value of thirty. Uh, by the way, again, it is a good exercise. Uh, find, find the predicted probability of uh, objectives. 
we have adjectives uh, for a language with 30 consonants. Okay, again, we use, uh, we use this line, but uh, I want an, an exact number. Uh, and uh, let us go back to the coefficients. We have these coefficients. Uh, we obtain them from the table that is returned by R. And could you please find me the probability that we get here? How to find it? Again, we have two options. Uh, we can use, uh, we can just solve this. Uh, so we can substitute everything into this equation and solve it with respect to P. Or we can use a sigmoid function, which is essentially the same thing because we obtain this sigmoid function as the solution of this equation. But you can, you, you can make both. And again, I'm asking, uh, uh, I'm waiting for your answers in private messages. So please uh, send me this probability. Okay, this uh, exercise uh, goes much better. Uh, so basically, uh, uh, we can say that it is 
Um, this is sigmoid, and uh, we are just uh, we are just putting these numbers. This is intercept uh, plus thirty times. this thing uh, or uh, it is uh, the same thing uh, is to say that um, we have exponential of this thing divided by one plus exponential of the same thing uh, results are identical because actually this is the same thing as sigmoid. And this is the probability that we are interested in. And also, uh, of course, uh, we can do it manually like, like this, but we can also use function predict and uh, we can put it our model. And uh, then uh, we have to form a data frame uh, that is similar to our data frame, uh, but uh, have only columns that corresponds to independent variables. Uh, so in this case, uh, this is data frame uh, with, for example, I put here 50, 30, 55. Mm, no, uh, it doesn't work like expected. Why? And um, just a second. Yeah, I see. Response. Okay, why well, I have equal equal values here? Probably something wrong with this data frame. Ah, yeah. Um, I didn't run. Uh, I didn't run my fit again. Yeah, sorry, uh, I, this notebook became uh, a bit messy because uh, I fitted uh, different models and gave them the same names. Uh, it is a bad practice. Uh, and I was punished uh, for following this bad practice. Uh, let me try again. Okay, yeah, uh, we see that uh, I created this data frame and uh, with in this data frame, I have three rows uh, for which values of this variable uh, are equal to this values, 15, 30, 45. And you see that the predictions that we have for this value 30 is exactly the same uh, as we obtained manually. Again, um, we did some truncation, so uh, this term can be different, but anyway, this is the same number. Uh, so this is the way how we can get uh, the predictions. Note that uh, in uh, generalized linear models, you can predict not only response, so this is the actual probability, but you can also predict uh, predict log odds. So uh, these are corresponding log odds. So for example, this value, uh, it is just, uh, it is just this thing.
Uh, so that's it. Uh, I hope that now uh, it is more clear how this logistic regression works and how to interpret uh, its results. Are there any questions? Maybe not at the moment. Maybe mm -hmm. uh, okay, then uh, that's all for today. Uh, um, you can use logistic regressions uh, in your projects. For example, if you try to uh, try to analyze dependence of some categorical thing, uh, like choice of, I don't know, some choice of suffixes or, uh, or prefixes or choice of word between two options, uh then you can you can use you can use if if it is the value of interest uh you can use logistic regression uh, so uh, you can you can use it in your projects and that's all for today bye see you thank you bye, bye.